This is Imagineer Systems booth um, at NAB. We're going to be going over how to use Mocha, and we're going to be going over features available in Mocha Pro. Now, I'm going to load in this file over here right quick. We'll play it while I talk. So we got a couple of really um, sort of fun announcements. Our big announcement is that we have partnered with Cold Core Melt to make Slice X. They have made this lovely Lovely plugin for Final Cut X that basically makes it to where you can use Mocha tracking to make shapes inside of Final Cut X. We've been doing a lot of SDK development over the past 12 months. So one of the things we've been doing is we've partnered with Quantel. So we now can you can now use Mocha's tracker inside of Quantel. You can also use it inside of Silhouette 5. And you can also use it inside of HitFilm. So that's been a lot of SDK stuff we've been doing. All right, now, what is Mocha and how does it work, okay? Mocha is a planar tracker. That means that it is not a feature tracker, it's not a point tracker, and it doesn't work like that. So, if you try to treat it like a planar, if you try to treat it like a point tracker, you're going to be disappointed. So, the way we work is we draw a shape around an area that we want to track. Okay, so in this case, we're going to track the side of this car by drawing a lovely shape right around here. All right, so. I'm also going to come in here, I'm going to use the Add to x Blind tool, and I'm going to just very quickly add some reference points uh, to my texture just so that I make sure I get a nice fluid motion throughout the shot. I'm going to turn my surface tool on, I'm going to align my surface tool to the side of this car so that you can see what the track looks like as we track. Now I'm going to track translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective. Translation is pretty obvious, scale is obvious, rotation is obvious, but shear and perspective mess people up. So shear is just movement in x and y and perspective is the addition of z-space, okay? This car is moving in z-space, so we're going to go ahead and track this forward. So track, 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 track. And you can see that the surface tool is staying right on the side of the car, okay? So what we can do is that is we can do all sorts of information with, uh, we can do all sorts of compositing with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and um, we can either drop a logo right in on the side of this, something like that, right? or we can export this tracking data to any number of programs. So we can export this to After Effects, um, Assimilate Scratch, we can do Autodesk, Avid, Boris, Digital Fusion, Final Cut, Motion, Nuke, Quantel, and Shape. So that's that pretty much just got you covered, I think. All right, we can also take our shapes and we can export them as roto shapes. So how that's gonna work is like this. All right, so let's talk a little bit about, um, let's talk a little bit about this shot. This is a shot from Legend 3D. We're going to talk a little bit about rotoscoping and how Mocha can save you time with rotoscoping. So what we do is we go ahead and we use Mocha as our roto assistant to drive the general uh, motion of our roto shape and then we tweak it over time in order to cut our roto time in half by cutting our keyframes down by a third. I'll show you what I mean by that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here. We're going to draw a roto shape right around this frame here. And actually I think I'm going to track backwards. So I'm going to draw a rotor shape right around this frame here, okay? And we're going to use this to hold out this spider web shape, okay? Because the spider web is going to get in the way of my track when I try to track his arm because it's moving over the top. Mocha tracks one plane at a time. So here's how that works. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to draw a shape around Spidey's hand here. And I'm going to draw a shape around his arm. All right, we're going to use these to drive our roto shape. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use our join layers tool and we're going to hook these together. All right. We're going to call this arm track. We're going to call this hand track. All right. We're going to call this web holdout. Okay. Only spelled right. All right. Now with the web holdout, what we're going to do is we're going to drag this to the top of the layer pile because look at treats everything at the top of the layer pile as closest to the camera, everything at the bottom of the layer pile as furthest to the camera. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to track all of these at the same time. Where were we starting? We started from there. We're going to track these backwards. All right, so we're going to track all of these at the same time. What that's going to do is that's going to be funky looking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to correct that. So sometimes Mocha will pre-cache uh, tracks, and that just means you need to empty out your preferences. So I'll empty out my preferences here in a minute. But what we're going to do from here is we're going to just adjust this and we're going to track backwards so that we can correct our tracking data on the fly for the purposes of this demo. All right, so we're going to track backwards from there. And that's better. So now it's now it's fixed. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and turn off our, our um, visibility. We're going to turn off our gears. 
we're going to make a fire rudder shape, we're going to hook it up to that track, okay? So what we do is we come in here and we hook up our finer rotor shape to the track. We're going to make another one for the hand. All right. And we're just going to use that same join layers tool. We're going to pin these together. All right. And we're going to correct this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hook this. This is going to be the hand roto. This is going to be the arm roto. What we're going to do is we're going to hook these up to our previous tracks that we made. So this is going to be arm track, and this is going to be uh, hand, uh, hand track. Where's my hand track? Thank you. And what we're going to do is we're going to correct where it starts to go off. And what Mocha will do is Mocha will tween between these. Well, my track for my hand is bad. But on my arm, we'll just have to redo that another, another time. But so basically, when it's working correctly, go demos. This is how you know my demos aren't canned. Um, when it's working correctly, what will happen is you end up making about five or six keyframes for, um, for every uh, correction, as opposed to every other keyframe, all right? Now, when you're done with that, you can export your tracking data, and I'll show you. Um, what we've done in here is I basically wrote this whole shot using Mocha. And what we can do is we can go ahead and group these into, uh, like, little nests, right? So in this case, I've done Spidey and the web in different nests, okay? And we can color correct um, using uh, Mocha version 3 in order to get new matte colors and everything. If we need to export our mats, we can render our mats out with motion blur as black and white mats or as colored mats in one pass. Or we can export our shake data into combustion flame, nuke, shake, after effects, or final cut. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to export to nuke. And all we do is come over here to nuke. When we paste our shapes in, it pastes in as a roto paint node. Okay, and our rotor paint node is over here. And after effects, it pastes in as um, shakes, uh, shapes on a layer or as an effect, all right? So let's move on past this to uh, a little bit more, more interesting stuff. And what we're gonna do is we're going to open up our recent file here. We're going to open up our 3D camera solver. And we're gonna talk a little bit about how we export Mocha's planar tracks for 3D. Okay, so what we've done is we've tracked three different non-coplanar planes in here. Now, I want to uh, remind you guys, please get your badges scanned. We're giving away one free copy of Mocha Pro per day, um, randomly to, like, you know, as a, as a prize drawing for people who have scanned their badges. So you definitely want to make sure you get your badges scanned. I can do that. Daryl can do that. Or Ross can do that. All right, so let's get back to this. Um, what I've done is I've tracked this area, this area, and this area. So I've basically tracked three non-coplanar planes in this shot, okay, in order to get a solve. Now, the way that works is we're going to go to our camera solver, and we have a couple of different options we can solve for. A pan, tilt, zoom camera is a camera on a tripod that is either panning, tilting, or zooming. It's not, not hard. Um, and small parallax and large parallax, that'll cover the rest of all other shots. So small parallax is where you have a... Um, a camera that is far away looking at objects way over there, so landscape stuff, small parallax, okay? Large parallax is where you have a close camera, close objects, and if I look at my screen and I look at you, for instance, there's a large amount of parallax between you when I shift, okay? So this is going to be a small parallax solve, and we're just going to um, select all three of these layers and hit solve. Now, anything above a 70% is considered good in Mocha. I don't like to go under 90%, but you can do what you like, you know? Um, and we're going to let Mocha solve this. It's going to chew on this for a little bit. Um, about 30 or 40 seconds, and then we're going to end up with our solve. Now, this solve quality is 96%, so we can now export this camera data. So we export this camera data as either After Effects motion data, as uh, generic FBX data, as uh, FBX data for Nuke, or as a hit film composite shot. Those are our different exports. In this case, we're going to export the uh, After Effects camera data, so we're going to copy that to the clipboard. And I'm going to show you the shot that we've already set up in After Effects. What we have is we have our camera that we pasted in and we have our nulls from the ground plane. Now you'll see we have five nulls for our four corner pin that we have on the ground. That's one, two, three, four corners and a center point, okay? Now, our camera is here. You can see that our camera animates and our nulls do not. That means that we can hook 3D objects up to these nulls and they will move properly in space. So we've just used um, basically element in After Effects to put a 3D pole in here. And that's how that looks. So let me just play this and you can see. All right, so that is how you use Mocha's 3D camera solver in order to solve for the planes in the scene so that you can hook 3D objects up to it. So that's actually going to be really useful for, um, I think Adobe has just announced that uh, Cinephone 4D and Adobe are round tripping. So that'll be very handy for a lot of your work. All right.
Now, let's move on. Another cool thing that we can do is we can solve for lenses that are warped, and then we can also track objects as they go off screen. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, one of the ways that works is we can basically go into our clip tab, and we can go ahead, we can go ahead and move this down. What we do is we go ahead, pardon my pauses, we're trying to make this a uh, recording so people can watch this on the web. Um, so what we're doing is we're uh, clipping down this front area here, okay? And we're doing that because this is the region of interest, this is where I want Mocha to look, and I don't want Mocha to look at this blanking. So now when I go to my track tab, it's gone, okay? So Mocha's not gonna look at it, and neither am I. Now, from here, we solve for the lens, okay? So what we do is we look for every line in the shot that should be straight. Okay, in this case, we're going to ask Mocha what it thinks needs to be straight. Mocha's a computer, so when I say locate lines, it says everything, every hard edge. You know, and I say, well, that's why I'm the artist, okay? I get to tell you where you're right, where you're wrong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit in for new line, and I'm going to connect the dots, okay? In for new line, connect the dots, in for new line, in for new line, in for new line, and in for new line. And I'm just basically looking for good edges that I know should be, that was really awesome, um, good edges that I know should be straight, okay, and then I'm going to choose a parameter distortion, in this case uh, one or two parameters, one parameter is just a normal lens curve, two parameters is fisheye, one eye fisheye, one eye fisheye, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn this grid on so you can see how this calibrates, we're going to hit calibrate, bam, Mocha has said I think this is the curve that we need to solve for in order to solve this shot, now there's a couple of things I can do here, I can either come to my um, my export lens data tab and I can export my lens data as After Effects, an After Effects uh, plugin that we've uh, developed, or I can export it as a distortion map clip. If you're feeling very froggy, you can export it as lens data and write your own tools for it, but generally distortion map clip or After Effects clip is what you're going to export as. Uh, a distortion map clip is an ST map, it renders out an RGB value that describes the lens curve. You can also import ST maps if you have another department in your studio that solves for lenses. All right? Now, um, you can also render this out with no curves. So you can render this out flat, which I would just hit render. It would render it out flat, right? So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to put something inside of the screen, inside of Mocha. So I'm going to check my data. I'm going to check my data by tracking it. Now, when you're tracking objects on a curved surface, the closer they get to the edge with a, um, with a, uh, with a lens, um, with a lens warp, the harder it is going to be to track. Um, that's why you solve for a lens in Mocha, because it makes it easy to track now. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to add the X-Blind, and I'm going to snatch these little layers. Okay, now here's the thing. When you track screens for Mocha, don't put tape on the lens, I mean, don't put tape on the screen, don't put tape on the screen. The reason you don't put tape on the screen is because Mocha is a planar tracker. We track textures. So this kind of stuff, while it will help a little bit, is not going to help as much as, like, say, putting some texture here and putting some texture here and then just erasing it in post, you know, would have been much more useful is what I'm saying. Like, um, this sort of stuff is just two small areas. Mocha does well with general motion, okay? So little points are not what you want. Now, Regardless of that, we're still going to use these to track because, you know, we can't really help what the DP gives us. What the DP gives us is what the DP gives us, and we have to make it work. Okay? So, that's what we're going to do. So, I'm going to come in here, I'm going to align this to all four corners of my screen, and I'm going to overscan a little bit because what I want is I want to make sure that I don't, when I render everything out, that I don't render over my, uh, that I don't render under render with uh, motion work, essentially. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and track this forward. And I'm just going to go ahead, change this to like 40, and track forward. And you'll see as this gets moves through space, the track moves according to how the lens is warped, right? Okay? That's really valuable for when you need to put square shapes into round holes like this, you know? So, we're going to let that finish tracking through. And it, you, you notice it doesn't matter that the corners are going off screen. Mocha doesn't care. It's not a corner pin tracker. It's looking for relative motion, okay? So... Now, I could take this now and export this tracking data as a corner pin data to whatever program I wanted to export it as, all right? And I could take that and composite and put my lens warp on it and put my passes in it and go back and forth and back and forth. I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to my insert tab. I'm going to go to my insert clip. I'm going to import a screen that I want to put on top of this, whenever it opens. 
and I'm going to pick some like pre-screen that I've made, you know, and I'm going to click motion blur on, I'm going to turn my overlays off, and I'm going to hit render forward, okay? So now that I've hit render forward, here's what's going to happen. While I'm rendering forward, it's going to render out my insert with its own motion blur, okay, with its own alpha channel and its own lens warp, so I can just put it like a pass into my comp. So I don't have to go back and forth and worry about it. What I see in Mocha is what I get in my comp, okay? And then I can do my high-end compositing where I add reflections, I change the blending modes, you know, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Treat this like an RGB pass, all right? Now, the last thing I want to show you guys, I'll just scroll through this so you can see what's going on. The last thing I want to show you guys is sort of like the closest thing that we get to Voodoo um, in Mocha, which is our auto-remove module, okay? This is worth the price of admission of Mocha Pro, okay? Here's how this works. What we do is we define an area that we want to remove with our X blinds. In this case, I've defined the cart. Um, I don't know if you guys saw Red Giant's um, uh, short that they did, Pizza Guy. Yeah, everything gets zapped away. Well, the way you shoot that is you shoot them off the, you shoot that with the objects on the ground, and then you remove them. And you put your effects between that transition. All right. So, but what what you do is you must track the background in order to do that. So here's what you're doing. You're saying this is what I want to remove and this is how I want you to remove it. So think what, how, what, how, okay? Now the how is really important. I have to make sure that my track for this background is rock solid, or when I replace it, the tracking will determine how accurate that solve is. Now I'm going to go ahead and align this surface tool to the ground. We're gonna go to our track tab, and we're gonna track this forward. Now, I'm going to watch and see what that track does, okay? So, if that track is moving through space and that grid is warping, popping, or doing anything funny, I know that my track isn't good. So, I have to, as the artist, find another way to move my spline around in a way that gives me a better track, okay? So, that means I need to look out for reflections, I need to look out for slow-moving shadows, I need to look out for things that would, over time, slowly make my track off and adjust accordingly. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just play this back through and make sure that it's working. And it is, so that looks really rock solid. So here's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna jump to our Remove tab. I'm gonna click on my cart that I wanna remove and I'm going to import a new clean plate. So in Photoshop, I've made a clean plate. I'll show you what that looks like. Over here where I have just really quickly cloned out my um, my uh, cart for a single frame, okay? I hit OK. When I come back into my, uh, my remove area, I say that I took this from frame 110, so that's where it needs to go back to, all right? And I hit OK. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that I use clean plates exclusively, all right? And then I'm going to make sure that I use linear illumination modeling, and here's why. As I render forward, what's going to happen is Mocha is going to look at that shape that I'm replacing, use my clean plate, shift it through time, okay, and then it's going to say, what are the pixel values around my shape? And it's going to lighten or darken that area based on the surrounding pixel values, much like the heel tool works in Photoshop. So that is how I'd use one frame of sloppy clean plate to make a really nice solid remove for the entire shot. So this is Mocha Pro. I am Mary Poplin with Imagineer Systems. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I'm the local LA-based product specialist. And if you have any studios in the local LA area and you want me to come by and talk to producers, talk to artists, and convince them that this is a cool tool, you know, because you think so, I would love to come do that. I also do Skype demos anywhere in the world. So thanks so much. I'll have a wonderful day, and thanks for listening. All right, thanks guys, thanks for tuning in, and we hope to see you guys around. If you made it to NAB, we're really glad to see you. If you weren't able to make it to NAB, we hope you enjoyed this video.